Baptist preacher normally does. Um, I'll uh, I'll try to keep it fairly brief and 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 so your rear end doesn't hurt as bad as mine by the end of it. So talking about price seasonality, our, our prices for slaughter cows is generally the lowest October, November, December, and January. So in other words, we're right out of the time period when these prices are the lowest. We've just come out of it, and we're and we typically see the highest prices in April, May, June, and July. Now this does not mean that you shouldn't sell cattle in, in October, November, December, and January, or that you should sell these animals in May, June, and July. We're not always trying to hit the, the top of the market. Uh, hitting the top of the market is, is not necessarily the most advantageous from a cost and return standpoint, but it's good to know uh, when prices tend to be the lowest and when prices tend to be their highest. But to put that in a graphical form, this is a seasonality graph, and where you see 100%, essentially, if, if, the line, if that blue line crosses 100%, that means that's the annual average price. But if we go and we look to June, which is the highest, the, the peak on, on this, this chart, that's essentially saying that, that slaughter cow prices or utility cow prices are about eight to 9% above the annual average in June, so the price is eight to nine percent above the annual average. So if the annual average was was fifty cents, then an eight percent increase would put us at fifty four cents, right? Uh, or fifty four dollars a hundred weight. Um, whereas if you look into uh, October, Octo November tends to have the lowest price. But if we look at October and we're ten percent below the annual average, if the annual average was that fifty cents then we would actually be, you know, the 10% below would be 45 cents. So that's essentially a nine cent swing from the highest price to the lowest price in that, uh, uh, in that year. Or if we talk about $9 a hundred weight, well, $9 a hundred weight uh, times a 1200 pound animal. Oh yeah, that's a lot of money. That's how we do that math. Um, so when you're looking at a hundred, over a hundred dollars uh, of value in these animals, from the highest price time period to the lowest price time period, there's a lot of marketing window in there to, to gain dollars to go back into the operation. Um, the problem is, is a lot of these slaughter cows are marketed in that October, November time period because that's the same time period that we're culling our, our that we're uh, weaning our calves. So when we pull the calves off of them, we tend to just go ahead and drag the cows right off of them as, off the place as well. So we don't have to feed them through the winter. And, that doesn't mean that that's not the, the correct decision in some instances, but I'll talk about some alternatives that might be a little more advantageous uh, to us as producers from a, a profit, profitability standpoint. So I also want to, this, this, this is something that feeds into that seasonality, but I want you to look at, at, at the very first column or the second column that says number of years prices increased. So, out of the past 10 years, slaughter cow prices have increased every year going from January to February. So in other words, we expect February slaughter cow prices to be higher than the, what they were in January. Similarly, if you go to the very bottom and you look at that December to January time period, nine out of 10 years, prices of slaughter cows increased from December into January. All right, so, so that kind of gives us an idea of what should happen. Now, if you go to the far right-hand column, and let's stay at the very bottom again in that December to January, that's on average, the, the price increase of slaughter cows from December to January has averaged $4 a hundred weight. And then you get up here to the January, and you go back to the very top line, and you look at January into February, well, there's, there's $4.80. So there's there's nearly eight dollars per hundred weight over that ten-year period. Uh, that just holding cattle from December into February would see an eight dollar per hundred weight increase in price. All right, eight dollars a hundred weight. So eight dollars times twelve is ninety-six, right? So right there is nearly your hundred dollars of value. Now the question would be, did you know how much did it cost to feed that animal over that time period? Um, and did it cost less than hundred dollars? Well, that you know that's a that's a little tougher decision or a tougher question to answer. Uh, but it, some of that would, would depend on 
uh, if you know what condition that animal was in when you weaned the calf or when you made the decision to cull. You know, if she was really thin, you might benefit by putting some weight on her. So then now you're actually selling more pounds and you may even change the grade of animal that she is, which could increase the price. But, but in essence, what I want you to see here is, you know, if you did carry that animal uh, through the winter months and, and you, so for instance, you have some to sell right now, uh, we've already seen the biggest increases that we're going to see. That doesn't mean that prices won't go higher, but but if we look at at the the drop off, you know, from February to March, we're only expecting a two dollar uh, per hundred weight increase in price, and from March to April, another dollar and a half. It may not pay us to keep on to keep those animals till when the prices are the highest. Is my point, you know? So we don't need to wait till May or June to sell them mainly because we just don't see enough price increase from now until that time period to really justify the cost of feeding those animals, especially if they're in a, in a, a good body condition of five or higher, which I'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But, but my point is that this really goes to show you where we see those biggest increases from month to month in these prices, and that, that can be an indicator of when we should market these animals. So what determines a cow's value? Really, it has to do with how much, how much weight does she have on her and how much meat is there actually to, to harvest from this animal. So how much finish, does she, is, is there trimmings that are gonna come to, how much muscle, cost, is she good muscle cow? Is she gonna be a high dressing cow or a low dressing cow? If she's low dressing, then she's not gonna get a high, as high a price. If she's an average dressing, that's what we'd expect. And if she's a higher dressing cow, which means you're gonna get more more beef out of her, then she's going to bring a higher price. Um, so those are the things because in, in reality, uh, we're selling, we're in the business of selling beef and the more beef that we get out of this animal, the higher price that we're, we're going to see from, from that animal. So that leads us right into cow slaughter mm -hmm. grades. And if you look at USDA reports, we typically have them broke down into three grades. That's breaking, boning, and lean. Uh, there's technically leans and lights, but we just group lean, leans and lights into the, the lean category. Uh, so breaking utility would be any cow that is a body condition score of seven or higher. And so essentially that means they're fat. Um, for lack of better terms, you can see especially where you can't, you can see where they're very rounded in these two pictures. You've got cows that are very, very rounded. They got pounds of fat, just gobby fat on them. Uh, you know, some people like their cattle to be in that condition. Actually, that's over conditioned. That's not, that's not actually, that's not the, where we really want them when we're in the breeding season or in the calving season. Uh, they're a little, little too fat for us. Now, some cattle are just prone to do that though. Uh, it doesn't matter what, how, what they're eating or not eating. There's some cows that are just more about taking care of themselves than taking care of anything else. And so, uh, it, you know, it, it manifests itself in, in fat deposition across this animal. Uh, these animals used to bring the highest price uh, in the slaughter cow market. The reason for that was because the, the name breaking utility is because they, they literally broke this animal at the 12th rib, just like they split a, a finished carcass. And, and so they actually generally get some steak cuts out of these animals. Um, the, these aren't the steak cuts that you get at fine dining restaurants, but if you remember Ponderosas or Western Sizzlings, uh, you know, some of the, the discount steakhouses, th these are the, this, more than likely, that's where these steaks were coming from. You know, those were really good. They were good steaks. Um, and if you still have a Western Sizzling or a Ponderosa or a discount type steakhouse like that, they're still good steaks. There's nothing wrong with those steaks. They just came out of a, more than likely came out of a, a very fat cow that had a good quality uh loin in her and a, a good quality rib in her and so they, they were able to get some steak cuts out of that animal and create a higher value for that beef in in a uh in those types of restaurants um you know there's also some animals that they call uh, premium whites uh those tend to be younger really fat animals uh, and they would even bring a higher price than a breaking utility. But those are, those are few and far between, but they do exist. Uh, in most cases, though, you're probably not happy if you're having to sell a premium white because there's something else that happened and, and that cow should have been in your herd producing calves 
as opposed to uh, going to the, to, to the auction market to be sold as a, as a slaughter cow. But anyway, these are over, these, the breaking cows tend to be over conditioned cows. And, you know, sometimes they just get that way. I mean, you can't, can't do anything about it. Now, here's where most of our cows end up being in the boning utility. Uh, I was actually looking at some, some data today uh, and, and probably I would say 60 to probably 60% of our cattle, 60 to 60 to 70% of our, our slaughter cows probably fall in this category. Their body condition score of four to six, which five and six is typically where we want our cows when we breed them and through the calving season. And we want to maintain a five or six body condition score. Uh, you can kind of see those, those, those hip, hip bones just very slightly, uh, but they're, they're not, there's not just pounds of fat falling off the rear end. Their brisket's not just overly fat, um, but they're in good condition. Uh, and, and this is where most cattle fall anyway. Uh, again, these cattle used to have a slight discount to breaking cattle, but over the past, well, actually, if we, if we don't use last year, if we don't look at 2020 and we look at 19, 18, and 17, you would actually see where these cows were bringing a slight premium to the breaking cows. And when I say a slight, I'm talking about one or two dollars a hundred weight. Uh, but, but all of last year, they pretty much were running even with each other. And, and I'll show a, a short little graph of, of that. But, but this kind of gives you an idea of what we typically see cows in and probably where most people want to market those animals. Um, because there's no reason to feed them, to have them utilizing resources and putting on gobs of fat uh, when they're going to get the same price as this animal. Now, this is, this is where we, we get some of those cows. You think about wintertime or, or, well, when we lean calves, if we had a dry, you know, if you're a spring calver and you had a dry summer and we get into the fall and the fall's dry and that calf has been on them, uh, we get them in what, what we call cutters and canners. But uh, the, if you're looking at it on a USDA report, they're called leans or lights. And, and these animals, they're, not, they're just not going to have a lot of meat on them. So they take a severe discount in 2020 on average across the year, it was about a $7 per hundred weight discount, uh, which, you know, on a thousand pound animal, you're talking about, you know, if, if you sell her as a thousand pounder and she should have been a 1200 pounder in, in a body condition score of five, uh, you know, there's, there's the, there's the $7 discount plus the 200 pounds that you're missing out on. So just the $7 discount on, on the 1200 pounds, uh, is $84 plus the 200 pounds that you're missing out on, which the 200 pounds at, at 50 cents would be another $100. Um, so, you know, you're looking at nearly $200 difference in value in this animal than an animal that's in the proper condition of a five or six. Uh, you know, you're easily looking at $200 worth of value lost because if you pull this cow off, she, you know, you just pulled the calf off October 1st and then you haul the cow at the same time and she's in a body condition score of three, um, we're losing a lot of value in that animal right there immediately. Uh, so these are those candidates. Those, the breaking and boning cows, they're not candidates to feed through the winter if we're a spring calver, and they're not, they're not candidates to do that. Uh, these animals right here are candidates to feed through the winter. Put on the two, put, put back on the, couple hundred pounds, um, get the improved price because of, of the grade, plus get the improved price um, from uh, just the seasonality of prices. So in reality, there could be more than $200 worth of value in carrying these animals from, let's say, October into February there could easily be $300 worth of value in those animals. And if you can feed those animals for less than $300, then it may be worth doing that. Now, the, the, those breaking and boning animals, I told you the breaking animal, you know, gets broke, broke at the 12th rib and, and they get those high value cuts. Most, bon, uh, most boning animals, they're ex exactly what they say. They just take all the bones out. We grind up all that beef and it goes into ground beef. Of course, cutter and canner, again, just grind ground beef again, uh, but just not as much of it. Now, those breaking and boning cattle, if we've identified them as animals to cull and we're a spring calving herd that sells our calves in the fall, 
what may what they may be a candidate for is early weaning their calves and marketing those animals in August or September. You know, prior to to calf our uh, slaughter cow prices just declining tremendously. So we might be able to get you know a, a extra sixty, seventy, eighty dollars out of them uh, just by marketing them earlier in the year and early weaning their calf. You know, maybe the calf gets weaned at five and a half months of age instead of seven months of age. Uh, and, and we can we can actually help our forage resources and still put a lot of gain on that calf over the next two and a half months before we want to sell that calf if that's what we desire to do. Now, when you think of it from a fall calving herd standpoint, um, you know, a lot of our cows get drawn down during the winter if they had, you know, if we calved during August, September, October, and into November, um, you know, you're trying to feed hay, there's, there's cold weather, um, calf is sucking the cow, and uh, those calves get weaned in April or May. And so then we, we sell those calves in April or May, and then that cow is still pretty thin. But what we generally have that time of year is we have a lot of grass. And so in, in you know, if you wean those calves in late April or first week of May, well, you know, over the next 30 to 40 days, that cow can eat some good grass, good spring grass, and she'll put condition back on. And if she's been identified as a cow to cull, uh, or if you do pregnancy evaluation of, of those animals um, and they come turn out to be open, well, you wean the calf and then you sell the, you know, the, the cow after you've put just a little bit of condition back on her if she's thin. And that, that actually hits the top of the, the slaughter cow market uh, by doing that. But you know, that's a, that's a, another real benefit to being able to, uh, if you use pregnancy evaluation, um, or pregnancy detection of some sort, uh, the ability to market those animals instead of from that fall calving herd in May or June, uh, you can market them because you know, they're open and there's no reason to keep them. Uh, same way, uh, you know, how do you know which cows you're going to call in the spring calving herd that, you would typically sell the cows in the fall. Well, if you go ahead shortly after the, the, the breeding season and use some type of pregnancy evaluation, you'll know that she needs to go if she's open. And so that's how you know to early wean the calf in August and go ahead and sell that cow while she's still in pretty good condition and when prices are still supported. So, Here's here's that discount that I that I was talking about on these on these breaking boning and lean cattle. Uh, you can see here that the green line, if you're colorblind, I so apologize. It's just the bottom line um, is is at a at a severe discount to uh, the breaking and the boning uh, cows. And so this just covers 2020 up until uh, last week. I mean, it it's, it it's only covers uh, 13 months essentially and uh and you can see where that discount is, is i would say that's an anomaly back in february of a year ago uh, i'm not exactly sure uh maybe we input data wrong i say we meaning me um uh, but uh for the most part you see where the breaking and boning cattle they follow each other very very closely and then the lean cattle are at a severe discount um, and that's, that's typical throughout every year. So the cost of feeding these animals, uh, you know, that, that I've, I've tried to talk about ways of not feeding them, but if you do have, let's say you do have that spring calving herd and you have some of those cows that are in a body condition score of three, they just, you know, they, the cow just, or the calf just brought them down. Maybe they're an older cow maybe you know they're just not a very efficient cow whatever it is uh you know you gotta you, you have to evaluate if it's worth feeding that cow from october through maybe early february or mid-february and will you put enough weight on her will you upgrade her from a lean to a boning uh, utility and will there be enough dollars there to pay for all the feeding plus have some left over um you know it can increase gross revenue but just increasing gross revenue does not necessarily uh, mean that you've increased profits. And if you're not increasing profits, it's not worth doing. Uh, so in other words, value of gain has to exceed cost of gain. So a lot of times the best time of year to do this 
uh, you know, a 50 to 90 day time period, fall to spring is generally the, the, the best time. And when I say fall, that's, you know, fall technically goes until what, December 20th. Um, and, and I wouldn't even get them into the spring myself. If it were me, if I got them in the con decent condition from October, you know, let's say middle of October to February, um, then uh, I would probably go ahead and move them just because I don't expect prices to increase that much that much more. And by then, if they don't have a calf on them, uh, they should be in pretty fair condition if they've been eating any type of stockpiled forage or decent quality hay. A lot of those cows will have get, regained most of their condition unless they're just not thrifty cows. Uh, you need to consider the health of those cows. You know, if it's a cow that's got a terrible limp, um, you know, again, she might have been one of those that would have been better to early wean her calf and just capitalize while prices are a little higher. Uh, you know, if she's got a bad udder, you have to think about those. If she's got, you know, you don't want lump jaw, you don't want cancer eye, you need to market animals before they ever get to that situation. Uh, cows are very inefficient at converting feed. They're efficient at converting forage into pounds, but not a, not a feed like we think about feeding cattle, you know, a grain-based diet. That's not our best alternative for this, uh, need something that's very cheap. Uh, winter annuals is a great ex example. That's why I have the background uh, because that is, that's, you know, that's actually steers grazing winter annuals. But, uh, you know, winter annuals are, are if, you, if you get them planted early enough, you'll get a lot of fall grazing and winter grazing out of them. And then you'll start getting a lot, a lot of grazing out of them again this time of year. Uh, so, you know, it's those types of things that you need to use to, to try to feed these animals, something that's fairly inexpensive. So, you know, it's, you know, it's going your way if, if the feed resources are available. Um, and if you can actually sell extra pounds, if you can't sell extra pounds, if you can't put weight on them, then there's no sense in keeping them. They need to be moved. Uh, if you can improve the grade of them, then yes, then, then feed them if that, if that makes sense. Um, and these prices tend to be on the rise in the spring. So this time of year is a great time to be selling those animals, especially if they're in a good condition to, to sell. Uh, you, you'll, you'll really benefit from, from that. Uh, I can't express enough how important pregnancy evaluation is in this decision making, but you know, you have to, again, there's a lot to think about, but you don't just necessarily, oh, I got seven cows that I'm going to get rid of this year. I'm just going to haul them all at the same time. Well, that doesn't necessarily make sense because if, if four of them are fat, well, they're the ones that were candidates for early weaning the calves and marking them in August. Whereas if the other three were thin, then maybe they need to be held on to and put more weight on them. Uh, if they were, if, you know, if they, if you could see all those ribs going down through them, uh, you know, those are the things you have to think about. So in other words, I mean, you know, really the, the, the essence of all this is you got to market these cows just like you would market calves. Um, Market healthy animals before problems ever develop. You know, the, the older these cows get, the more likely they are to have a problem. Uh, you know, I'm not saying get rid of a cow that produces a good calf every year, um, but you know, you kind of can keep an eye on if that, if, that, if that calf, if that cow's calf start to tail off, well then maybe we need to replace her with somebody else. Uh, market those animals before October or after January and, uh, Market animals that are in the, in just good condition. You don't want you know no reason to feed them, overfeed them to make them fat, and uh, we don't want to sell them thin. Um, that those are the things we need to you know think about. And is it worth feeding them or is it not worth feeding them? So with that, I wanted to I wanted to hit a lot of highlights, but I wanted to open it up because I thought there might be some questions about this specific, uh, and so I, that that's that's kind of why I set it up like it like I did. So I'll from with that I'll open it up for questions. All right, Andrew. Well, we've got a we do have one question right here that's come into the chat box uh, on that month to month price chart that you showed us early in the presentation. Uh, do you think the calves would kind of follow that same price chart? Yes, no, maybe. Uh, it all depends on what weight class of calf we're talking about. So we have a seasonality pub uh, publication that has all the you know for steers and heifers weigh anywhere from 300 to 800 pounds uh these these utility cows and for finished cattle 
we have we have a chart for all those and and i can i can send that to y'all uh and if if somebody wants it i mean it's available online you can probably just google uh seasonality of cattle prices tennessee and it you can probably find it um but i, I can put it in your inbox because you know lightweight calf prices will tend to peak in in march and april so earlier than these cow prices you know i'm talking about anything under 550 pounds maybe even under 600 pounds but you know set, true yearling type feeder cattle they're not those prices aren't going to peak until july august september so it all depends on what weight class we're talking about and uh you know what the demand for those certain animals are at a certain time you know when when are when are six weight cattle really in demand well, generally, when the Flint Hills of Kansas really needs uh, grazing, that they like to buy those six weight cattle to go out there in May and June. You know, so they're a little bit later on peaking in price than when uh, four and five weight cattle are. You know, people around here are really going to start hitting four and five weight cattle hard, buying them hard because they got grass. So it, it it differs by what class of cattle we're talking about. And heifers are a little different than steers. So, so what about what about selling uh, a colon with a, a pair, or a, maybe a bred, maybe a bred uh, cow? You know, what would that? How would that factor into it? You know, you see a lot of you see a lot of people selling uh, an old cow with a calf beside it. Is that something that a person might want to look at or think about? Well, um, that that is a oh that that's that's a tough question because why you know why are you why why is why is that cow being culled now and what size is the calf you know you know why am I culling a cow and what size is the calf is there is it not a calf that I can separate is it not a calf that I can wean uh, because more than likely they would have a higher value. If it's a weanable calf, they'd probably have a higher value value separated because you just don't see cow calf pairs going through the auction market uh, with a tremendous value uh, unless that cow can actually be rebred. She's going back to be rebred, um, and so why is she being called? I mean, I'm in the business. I've I've I bought several thin cows this fall, and you know. I, I'm in the business of buying them and, and I got, I got them cheap, fairly inexpensively. Um, you know, some of them have caved that whoever owned them didn't even know they were going to cave. You know, when you have, when you have one that has a calf within 10 days after you buy it, the person owning it probably didn't even know it had a calf. It was bred. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, you know, cause I, I, I think I, might have paid six hundred and fifty dollars for the cat for the head for the the female and then it has a calf within 10 days I, i'm not saying and, and i'm not saying i'm going to make a whole lot of money off of it but but you know th there's those little intricacies so you have to know why you're calling these animals because if, if if there's a reason why you're getting rid of the female and she's still a sound female well then maybe that's a way of selling them as a cow calf payer but if there's something wrong with that female, then I would I would tend to to split them, and and sell them on their own merit. Did that make any sense at all? Oh yeah, it did. It did. Uh, we got a question that's coming into the chat box, Andrew. It says most farms are maxed out with cows per acre. What value to the pasture would you consider to removing a cull open cow? So I guess they're wanting to know the value of the the grass. I guess. Um, yeah, most not just maxed out. Most people are overstocked, terribly overstocked, and so it's not that they're maxed out. They're they're over way past maxed out. Um, and that brings a whole nother issue into it i mean if you don't have if you can't feed to the cows that you got that you're counting on producing calves uh you probably had to you that's why i say that's why in the, the last slide you know you had to market these cows just like calves i mean 
you 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 produce a calf crop and you don't try to starve a profit out of them. Well, these cows see what a lot of people don't understand or think about. Not so they don't understand it; they'll understand it as soon as I put it in in simple terms for them right now. A lot of people don't understand how much depreciation they lose in a cow every year, how much depreciation costs they incur. Let me give you an example. A lot of a lot of bred heifers that we saw being sold this year sold for eighteen hundred dollars a head. A lot of bred heifers. You, pick, I don't care what price you pick, but I'm gonna I'm gonna use some simple math. So I pay eighteen hundred dollars for a five month bred heifer, and by at the age of two she she dropped her first calf. I've got eighteen hundred dollars in her as a purchase price. Let's say she stays in the herd until she's twelve. So that's 10 years that she's in the herd. Well, I turn around and for simple math, let me use simple math. Let's say she's worth $800 as a salvage value. So I paid $1,800 for, I'm gonna get $800 back on the salvage value. That leaves me $1,000. So 10 years, $1,000 divided by 10 years means I have $100 of depreciation in that cow every year. Now you can, you, can, you can attribute that to the calf and say that the calf that she produces every year has to make up that $100 of depreciation, or, I mean, that's where it should go. You know, so a lot of people don't wanna, they, you know, when we put together budgets, I don't, have y'all got, have y'all got the, the new budgets yet? Have y'all, y'all see, I think that email got sent out. Yeah, we got them. You know, got them. Okay, good. You know, people, people look at depreciation and interest and they say, well, that's not a real cost. Well, don't tell me it's not a real cost. I just told you how you lost $100 in depreciation on that, that heifer that you just bought for $1,800 every, you know, because when a, it doesn't matter how good a quality she is, she can produce great calves, but you're still going to be charged $100 if all you can sell her for is $800 in 10 years. You still have that $100 of depreciation in a straight line depreciation. Um, now a lot of cows aren't going to bring, you know, right now you get 60 cents on a 1200 pound animal. So that's only $720. So really the depreciation, you know, it doesn't really matter if you paid $1,500 for them. Well, now you got, you get 750 back out of her. So now you, you got $75 worth of depreciation. That's still a big charge. Um, so that's the way I think of it. That, 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 that you say, well, that didn't answer the question because he's talking about pasture cost, and well, yeah, I mean, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, if you can't get the highest value out of that animal, you're gonna suffer somehow, you know, suffer one way or the other. If you can't get a, and when I say highest value, I don't mean the highest revenue. I mean the highest value to your operation. And if 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 you need that grass for the cows that are producing calves, well, then you just have to take the hit on the the cull cow. That's very true, Andrew, and an open cow is not going to make you a whole lot of profit anyway. That's why pregnancy evaluation is one of the most important tools that we have that doesn't get used. My dad used to always tell us that uh, he was going to get paid one way or the other, either on the calf or on the cow. Well, you know, it it's amazing how much money can be saved, and I'm not saying – you know, the exact timing of when you use pregnancy evaluation, if she's got a calf on her at the time, may not be that, you know, you, you can you can detect it 20 day, 28 days after, you know, uh, conception or, well, on a heifer, that may be important. But if you've got a cow that's got a calf on her, uh, you know, maybe you wait till they're three months or four months along. Because at the end of the day, she's still got a calf on her that you're not yet ready to wean. Uh, but you do want to make that decision early enough that if you can early wean the calf and still get a good value out of the calf by feeding it a little longer or letting it graze a little longer and still get a higher, you know, if you can get $100 more out of the cow uh, by selling her in August as opposed to October, it may be well worth it. And yeah, yeah, those open ones, they just don't return. You know, everybody uses some type of pregnancy evaluation. Problem is, is 95% of producers, they wait until the Kevin season to find out. And 
that's that's their pregnancy evaluation. They don't matter. You turn on them, but. All right, Andrew, is there any more questions out there? Man, I must have done a great job. You did. You did. You throw a lot of information out to us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we do have a reminder on March the 11th, we're going to do this again. We'll have Dr. Uh, Justin Reinhart with us, and he'll be talking about AI and in the commercial herd is what will be uh what will be the topic on march the 11th uh, if you're not getting our emails for the updates and stuff just let one of our offices know and we will uh we'll fix that problem dr griffith we really do appreciate your time uh and your information uh i had somebody to ask will that coal price chart be available can you send me that andrew so i can get it out to the people that that want it yeah, I'll send it to both you and Scott. I'll send that publication. Make sure y'all have that link. All right. Well, we, we sure do appreciate you, Dr. Griffin. We appreciate everybody joining us, and we look forward to seeing you at our next one. Thank you. Thank you for having me.